Hey there, welcome back to another lesson in my full stack uh, web developer roadmap series where I take you from being a complete beginner to deploying your first full stack web application. If you're new here, I'm Zach, I'm a full stack developer and that's just about all you need to know. So let's get started. In this lesson, we are talking about a variety of things, but the overarching concept is going to be about the built-in JavaScript objects and functions. Now, in the last couple of videos, we have talked about um, the basics of JavaScript, essentially. So we started with some variables and we went through you know, functions and loops and operators, conditionals, all that good stuff. So at this point, we're ready to jump into some of the built-in um, functions and objects within JavaScript, which is going to save us a ton of time when we're actually writing our code because it basically, uh, it, it's a bunch of shortcuts essentially, and also just kind of the basis of the JavaScript language. Here's what we're gonna cover in this video and the next couple videos, but all encompassed within lesson six of the series. So we're going to learn how to read documentation. That's a really important thing as a developer. Uh, we're gonna do a quick start, kind of an overview of callback functions. They're a little bit confusing, but we'll get through them. And then we'll talk about primitive values versus um, object values within JavaScript. We'll talk about dates, regular expressions, string methods, array methods, um, the math library, error types, and then a couple data types that we have not actually covered yet. That would be not a number or NAN and then also null and undefined values. So we've got a pretty pretty big laundry list of things to cover uh, in this lesson. It's gonna take a little bit of time, but I promise you when we get to the end, you're gonna have a much uh, bigger overview of what the JavaScript language is all about. Now, the one thing that I'll say as we go into this lesson is this is probably gonna be the last one where we're just focusing solely on JavaScript. We have to get through a lot of different things. So we have to cover HTML and CSS and then a couple different other things before we're actually writing our web apps. So this will be the last kind of lesson that we're talking about JavaScript alone. Now there are other things in JavaScript that we will not cover quite yet. So that would be like the async await and promises and classes, object oriented programming, you know, it all kind of goes together. And those are some more advanced JavaScript topics that I'm gonna pick up later down the road when we've actually written uh, some sort of su substantial web app. So hold tight on that. I'm not gonna cover it yet, but we are gonna get through the basics here and then we'll start getting into actually building that web app of ours. The first thing that I wanna do is actually go through how do we read documentation. And we can start at the Mozilla Web Docs, which is called MDN for short. And we've looked at this previously um, in the code challenges from the last lesson, lesson five but we didn't actually go into depth on how to read this documentation. And I think it's really important uh, to do so. So you get to the homepage of the MDN web docs, you go to technologies and you'll find JavaScript. Now JavaScript is documented in a variety of places. This just happens to be um, what most people consider the official JavaScript documentation. So once we're on the JavaScript homepage, you can see on the left, you've got this navigation bar. Uh, there's some tutorials that you don't need to go to because this is a tutorial about JavaScript. But then what we're interested in is the references. So when we talk about references, that's generally gonna be a big part of any sort of documentation that you're looking at. Generally with documentation, you're gonna have some sort of quick start guide just to get you started with whatever library or framework that uh, you're reading the documentation for. Then you're gonna have some sort of tutorial usually. And then finally, you're gonna have an API reference. Um, sometimes they just call it a reference like they do here. Sometimes they call it the API. Sometimes they call it the API reference. Uh, whatever the case, it's all kind of centered around, okay, here's the core of, of this library or language or framework. And this is where you need to go to learn more about using it. So that's what we're interested uh, in for JavaScript and particularly right now, since this video is all about the built-in objects and functions, uh, we can go to this built-in objects dropdown. And here you'll scroll down and you'll see a variety of different uh, types of objects. And um, these objects have things called instance methods 
Uh, it kind of gets into object-oriented programming, and I don't want to go there. But that's why I'm saying objects and functions. Um, now, it's going to say objects here, but the functions are kind of uh, what we call a method on top of these objects that, that you can call from the object. So um, you can scroll down and see a bunch of different ones. Most of these are going to be irrelevant to you as the complete beginner. And quite honestly, they're going to be irrelevant to you um, even as you get better. So the point of this video is to point out the most important ones, the ones that you're going to be, um, that you're going to need to get the most familiar with. And we'll go through them uh, in more detail, but I just wanted to give you an overview of this. And then as you click through a specific object, so let's say we go to string, which as you'll learn in a little bit, a little bit later in maybe the next video or something, uh, a string is actually an object in JavaScript like everything else. So it's a little bit confusing, but you'll get the point in a little bit. Now, once we're on the string uh, documentation page or reference, it's going to give you an overview of everything. And this is kind of the, the main homepage for this string object. Now, in JavaScript, everything kind of behaves as an object. And it has these things called methods on it, which are the functions I'm talking about. When I say method, you can just think of it as a function um, that is you know, attached to that object. So as we scroll down here on the left, you're going to see this thing. It says string.prototype.whatever method we're talking about. Now the prototype part, that's a complexity of the JavaScript language that we have not covered and we will not cover in this series. That's a little bit uh, above our pay grade and we don't need to get into that to actually start writing the code. Once again, I've said this in previous lessons, if you want to understand the prototype chain and all of these complex things about JavaScript, um, of course, after you've kind of mastered the basics, you can go to the You Don't Know JavaScript series. Um, it's completely free, so you don't know JavaScript. And it's actually hosted on GitHub. Um, I think his name is Kyle Simpson. Um, I would go to the first edition branch here, and then you can scroll down and just see all of the different books that he's written on JavaScript. It's a really good guide that's going to take you through uh, the nuances of this language. Anyways, coming back to here, so we have the object at the beginning, dot prototype, and then the method. So let's click on one of these methods and see how we actually read the spec or the reference for each method. I think a good one to start with, um, let's see, which one do we want? So we want to start with the pop method. This is a really easy one to um, get used to, and this is not part of the string spec, so we need to go to arrays, actually. So let's go to JavaScript, and then we'll go to built-in objects and click array. Now, same thing, you have all these methods here, and we're going to go down here to the pop method. Now, when we get to the pop method reference, you're going to see a little summary and then an example. And this is the case for all of these different methods. Usually, you should be able to figure out or get the gist of what this does and how to use it from just this starting section. But it's really important to start developing the skill of learning how to read documentation. And oftentimes, it can be a little bit confusing, um, especially since each uh, language and site and framework and library, it depends on how they've written their documentation, it might look a little bit different. So anyways, the pop method removes the last element from an array and returns that element. This method changes the length of the array. Alright, so we know it is mutating or changing um, the existing array that we're working on. Now if we come down to the syntax section, this is what I want to focus on in this video. Because if you are a more experienced developer, you should be able to um, kind of figure out all of the nuances of a specific method or function from this syntax section. Now, when we look at the pop method, it just gives us this basic little syntax. And you can see that there's nothing in this parenthesis, um, nothing that you pass in. And then when you come down to the return value, it says the return value is the removed element from the array. And then it says undefined if the array is empty. So it tells you here's what the normal return value is. And then if you by chance pass in an empty array, which 
you probably won't um, unless you're looping through it or something, then it returns undefined. So this is a really basic one and just by looking at this, you can see how it works and we can come over to our console. We can create some sort of array here. So we'll just put a couple numbers in here. Now, if we print the array, it's one, two, three, and then array.pop, it's going to return the length of the array. So three is the length of, uh, of the array. But now, if we print the array, we only have two elements in it because it removed the last one. Now, this is a really simple one, but the next one that we want to look at is going to be the join method. And that's because it's going to add in a little bit harder documentation for us to read. Now, before I do that, though, let me go back to the pop method. So we got this overview section, the syntax, the description just gives you some more context around it. And then you have some examples. Now, as we get to the specifications, this is going to actually take you to the specific link within the ECMAScript um, spec. And we talked about that in, I think, lesson two when we talked about what is JavaScript. Um, but this spec is going to, we might as well click it and just see where it takes us. So it should take us to the pop method you can see up here. And this is the spec for, you know, the JavaScript language. So it just takes you there. It's not something that you'll be probably clicking on all that often. And then finally, you come down here to browser compatibility and you'll see all of the different uh, browsers. And then you'll also see a runtime over here. So Node.js is not a browser, but it's a runtime that runs JavaScript. So it shows you the compatibility for this method within all the different browsers. In this case, uh, the pop method is one of the oldest array methods in JavaScript. So it's supported by all the browsers. But as you'll see with some other methods that we look at, it's not supported in all of the different browsers. And oftentimes it's Internet Explorer that doesn't support it. So not a big deal. All right, so anyways, let's go back to, let's see, not the pop method. We wanted the join method, which is going to be somewhere here. All right. So looking at the join method, this is going to be a little bit more complex. I'm going to kind of skip over this first section just to get an overview. It says it creates and returns a new string by concatenating or joining all of the elements in an array. All right, so that's the basics. Now coming down, down to the syntax where we're trying to focus on, you'll see that this, um, this code block here has a little bit more complex uh, syntax going on. So it says array.join, and then in here we have this uh, word called separator, and we have these little brackets around it. Now what these brackets mean within the JavaScript or the MDN documentation, it means that they are optional. So the separator, this is just a description, like that word is arbitrary. So it says separator just to give you an idea of what type of parameter it takes as, I guess, an argument. So remember we talked about parameters and arguments, two sides of the same coin. Parameters are what we define when we declare a function. Arguments are what we pass in to that function when we actually invoke it, call it, um, you know, whatever you want to say there. So this, in this case, we have separator and we can read more about this here. So the separator specifies a string to separate each pair of adjacent elements of the array. The separator is converted to a string if necessary. If omitted, the array elements are separated with a comma. If separator is an empty string, all the elements are joined without any characters in between them. So if you are following along with the 25 practice problems from the prior lesson, we used this method a couple of times and we actually had to use that empty string to join all of the elements together with nothing between them. So this is where we would have found that. Now, of course, it's optional. So if you don't pass anything in there, it says if omitted, the array elements are separated by a comma. So it's optional. And then we come down to the return value and it says a string with all array elements joined if the array length is zero, an empty string is returned. So we can go ahead and test that too. So let's go into our console. We have an array here. Um, let's, let's actually create a new one. So let me clear the screen and we'll say string array. 
and then we'll say hello world. All right, so what if we wanted to combine those together? Now we'd use the join method, so we can say string array.join. Now, as we see it right here, we omit all of the arguments. Um, it just joins it with this little comma down here. Now, if we go back and look at what else we can do. So, uh, if the separator is an empty string, it joins it without anything between them. So, let's put in an empty string here. And you can see that it uh, joins those together into one string with nothing between them. Now, we can add a space here and press enter, and this is probably closest to what we would want if we were doing this. So that's just how you would read this. Now the last one I'm gonna look at for reading documentation is a little bit uh, trickier, and we're gonna to have to kinda of use these concepts we just talked about to get through it. The example that we're going to do is the array.includes method. So let's click on that wherever it is. Now this includes method determines whether an array includes a certain value among its entries returning true or false as appropriate. Now we're gonna cover this a little bit later uh, in this lesson, so I'm not gonna go too deep into it, but let's go ahead and look at the documentation here. It says, um, this is the code block that we're looking at, and you'll notice that we have a value to find, and then we have uh, the brackets here, and the from index. So breaking this down from how we understand it, there are no brackets around the value to find, which tells us that there is, that is a required parameter. You really can't run this method effectively without that required parameter. Now, it has this comma here, which basically means, okay, we're going to the next parameter that this function will take, um, and then it's surrounded by these brackets at the beginning and end, which means that the second parameter is going to be optional. Now, if we look down into the parameters description, value to find is the value that we're searching for, and it says it is case sensitive, so that's nice to know. And then the optional parameter is the from index, and it's basically saying you can start looking within this array at a certain index. So, you know, if the value to, to find is earlier than that index you specify, it's not going to include it. So that's just how we would read the syntax of this. And again, we're gonna go through this a little bit later in the lesson, so I'm not gonna do an example right now. And just to point out what I was talking about earlier, if you scroll down, so includes is actually a little bit of a new method, I believe. Um, I could be wrong on that, but I thought that it was offered only in the latest spec of JavaScript. Um, so if you scroll down to the browser compatibility, you'll see that Internet Explorer has no support for this method. So if you're developing an application for that has to run effectively in Internet Explorer, um, probably the only case that that's going to happen is if you work for like a really large company and that company kind of has legacy systems and applications that still run in Internet Explorer you don't wanna be using this includes method because it might screw up your application. So that's just what I was talking about earlier. Uh, no need to spend a ton of time there because as a beginner, you probably won't be worrying about supporting different browsers. That kind of comes a lot later down the road.